But when you start talking about hip replacement, the less invasive techniques, all of them use smaller incisions than we did traditionally, and that's basically what the patient sees on the outside. Some of these techniques also result in less muscle disruption under the skin, and some of them don't release the tendons at all, so that the, the muscles are parted rather than cut. And those are the ones that are probably a little more muscle sparing or truly less invasive. So the different surgical approaches that can be done in the setting of hip replacement include approaches where you approach the hip from the back, we call that a posterior approach. You can approach it from the side, we call that a direct lateral or anterior lateral approach, or you can approach it from the front, we call that an anterior approach. And there's also an approach called a two incision approach where you have a very, very small incision in the front and you have a very, very small incision from the back and you put the two different components through those different incisions. And they all have advantages and disadvantages. No approach is right for every surgeon, no approach is right for every patient. So we'll start with the direct anterior approach. The direct anterior approach goes in the interval between the tensor and abductor muscles which are supplied by the superior gluteal nerve and the rectus and sartorius muscles which are supplied by the femoral nerve. And you can part those muscles like you're parting curtains. So you don't have to detach those muscles with this approach. That gives you access to the capsule and then you can get to the hip that way. What's difficult with that approach is putting the stem down the femur because you have to really hyperextend the hip in order to put the stem down the femur. And some surgeons have difficulty getting the stem as far posterior as you would optimally want it with that approach. Another approach is called the direct lateral approach. The direct lateral approach is an approach from the side where you detach a portion of the abductor muscles. The abductor muscles are key muscles for function of the hip. With this approach, those muscles are repaired at the end of the, of the procedure, but the downside of that approach is there may be a slight increased risk of having a limp if those muscles don't heal down properly. Uh, but that's an approach where you come in here and you detach a portion of these muscles and then those muscles are repaired at the end of the procedure. Uh, another approach and probably the most commonly used approach in the United States is called a posterior approach where you come in from the back of the hip and you detach these small little finger-like muscles here called the short external rotators and you pop the hip out the back and then you're able to put in both the ball and the socket through that approach. And that's an approach that is it's nice in that it is extensile. It's an approach that you can do a lot through and you can start very, very small, but if you needed to do something complex like take out a screw and plate in the setting of a of a revision surgery or, or somebody who had a previous acetabular fracture, you can get to all of those areas through this approach. Well, there's some surgeons who will use these less invasive techniques for all patients. I think that there's some patients that they're more appropriate for than others. In general, the patients that it's going to be easier to do the less invasive techniques with a lower risk of having a higher complication rate are typically going to be patients who are thinner, patients who are not extremely muscular and don't have extremely tight joints, and patients who have good range of motion. In addition, the patients who are highly motivated to get back to their lifestyle. Clearly, people are improving much more quickly after joint replacement now than they ever have. They're, they're able to get back to their lives at a much earlier time point. I think there's two main reasons that differentiate Penn Orthopedics from many of the other uh, centers that perform hip and knee replacement. Uh, the one is we provide highly skilled care across the entire continuum of hip and knee disorders, taking care of patients from arthroscopic procedures to less invasive hip and, hip and knee replacement procedures, partial knee replacements, to the most complex revision surgery done anywhere. Uh, the other thing is, because of the, the facility and because of the collaborators that we have in medicine, cardiology, anesthesia, safety is paramount here at Penn. I am Dr. Charles Nelson, Chief of the Adult Reconstruction Service at Penn Medicine.